Good evening, everyone. I am so thankful you're here. Appreciate you making the effort to come out tonight. Invite you to turn in your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 44. We want to begin with verse 4. We left off with the dealing with the prince in verses 1 through 3. And we learned that the, uh, the prince eats bread before the Lord. He goes into the sanctuary and comes back out the same way, but nobody else is allowed to do that. They are to go into the sanctuary. If they go in from the south gate, they have to go out the north gate. If they come in by the north gate, they have to go out by the south gate. And we know that when we are born again, we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away. We don't go back the way we used to go. We, we forget those things which are behind and press onward to the, to the uh, uh, call of the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ, the prince, he didn't have to uh, be redeemed. There was nothing to be made new. He was without sin, so he can come and go as he pleases. Ain't God good? Amen. Everything has a wonderful lesson for us if the Lord will show it to us. We want to look tonight at restoring the priesthood. It may be, not be obvious at the beginning of our readings, but you will begin to see as we read on down uh, through verse 16, beginning with verse 4 of Ezekiel 44, that the Lord is referring to the priesthood. And uh, it, he says in verse 4, Then brought he, God, me, uh, Ezekiel, the way of the north gate before the house, and I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of, of the Lord. And I fell upon my face. Notice the term, the house of the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning all of the ordinances of the house of the Lord. He's already said that in chapter 40, in verse, verse 4. And all the laws thereof, and mark well the entering in, of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. If you want to see what I was talking about, you can jot down Ezekiel 46, verses 8, 9, and 12, as far as the entering in and the going forth of the sanctuary. That's what we were talking about, Ezekiel 46, verse 8, 9, and 12. If you come in the south gate, you have to go out the north gate, and so forth. So he said, I want you to mark and notice everything. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, now listen, even to what house? The house. the house of Israel. He has twice mentioned the house of the Lord. But now he's talking to Ezekiel concerning the rebellious, even to the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, O ye, here he comes again, house of Israel, let it suffice you, of all your abominations, in that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh. The Apostle Paul talks about the operation of the Spirit of God and the circumcision being that of the heart. And he says, these people that you're putting in here to take care of the work and the uh, laws of the house of God, they're not true priests. You're just putting anybody in there. And he says, to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house, he emphasizes that, not the house of Israel, it's the house of the Lord. When ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant, because of all of your abominations, you have hired men, common everyday men, not priests, and put them in the service of the Lord. And now my covenant is broken, not just with them, but with you, because you are the one that is responsible for it. It is your abominations. And you have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but you have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary. What's the last two words of verse 8? They wanted a convenient God. Religion in America has a convenient God. 
if we need him, we take him off the wall like a fire extinguisher and put the fire out and everybody gets better and everything's all right and we hang him back up on the wall. He said, you have not kept the charge of my sanctuary, but you have provided uncircumcised of heart keepers for yourselves. Thus saith the Lord God, no, no stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary or any stranger that is among the children of Israel. In verses 6 through 9, he's talking about the unworthy, those who should not have been in this place, but who these priests and so forth have gotten tired of doing all of that that God had commanded them to, so they hired their butcher. I don't know, somebody that could take care of all the things that they had to do. Then in verses uh, 10 through 14, we have the unfaithful. Verses 6 through 9, the unworthy. Verses 10 through 14, the unfaithful. And the Levites. All right. Now we're getting into the awareness of the priest that are gone away far from me. Hold your place, Luke 10, 32. Just one verse. Won't have to say much about it because you will recognize it and what the situation was when you read this one verse. Luke 10, 32. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and did what? Passed by, Passed by on the other side. Now what does Ezekiel 44 and verse uh, number 10 say? The Levites that are gone far away from me. Inasmuch as you've done it unto one of the least of these, you've done it unto me. And the story of what we have of the good Samaritan, the Levite comes along, seeds him, crosses over to the other side, don't want anything to do with him, and does not minister to him. Back to Ezekiel 44. Verse 10. And the Levites that are gone away far from me when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offerings and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them. Because they, the Levites, ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. I believe it was Isaiah, I'll have to look it up, but he says to Israel, thou hast polluted the land. If a land is polluted, it usually starts right here. The natural always follows the spiritual. When the church gets tired of the same old gospel and don't want to hear the old, old story, when they get tired of offering sacrifices and doing all the things they had to do and making sure the sacrifice was clean without blemish and it would have to be a dove this time and, a, and a, a, an ox this time or a sheep this time or a goat this time or had had to know about the sin offering, the burnt offering, the peace offering, there's all kinds of stuff. They just got tired of it. They ain't going to do it no more. And when that went down, the nation went down. You have caused, verse 12 of Ezekiel 44, the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore have I lifted up my hand against them. What do you think that means, lifted up my hand? Have you ever had anybody do this? You know, you're fit to get smacked if they showed you the back of their hand. But didn't they fix it so that he couldn't lift up his hand? Didn't they nail them both down to the cross? You start out, dear soul, 
improperly relating to the hands of God, you wind up in an awful mess. And cause the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore have I lifted up mine hand against them, saith the Lord. And again, he says the same thing he did in verse 10. And they shall bear their iniquity. And they shall not come near unto me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abomination which they have committed. What shall he do? He's going to demote them. Listen. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service thereof, for all that shall be done therein. So the Levites have gotten tired of God. They put others in their place. They have violated the covenant between them and the Lord, and God now has demoted them. Numbers chapter 14. The book of Numbers Chapter 14. Y'all just wait a minute. I'm looking. Make it 16. Numbers 16 and verse 8. And Moses said unto Korah, Hear, I pray you, ye sons of whom? Levi. Levi. Now listen. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel? to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he hath brought thee near to him and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also, for which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. So we find that this has been a problem with them and ambition has got into them and being uh, common, that is, having to continue to do the same thing over and over all the time has just wore them out and they do not have any respect or worship nor do they see the glory of God in doing what they do. Dear friend, listen, American religion is no more than belonging to a club. If you attend the meetings and you pay your dues, you're all right. But that's not how it is with the true worshipers of God. We're all too glad to come and attend the services, and we're all too glad to give of our tithes and offerings to the Lord and we don't see it, see it as paying our dues. And we don't think that we're buying anything from God. We're just offering up our gifts as worship to the Lord God. But that wasn't the way that it was with them. Ezekiel 14. I think this is where I got that 14. Ezekiel 14, I hope. And verse 1. Ezekiel 14 and verse 1. Notice the phrase. Then came certain of, the phrase is the next four words. So here are those who are in charge. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, notice this. It came unto me. It's not for them. This is God talking to Ezekiel. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart 
and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face and listen at the question that he asked Ezekiel. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Now, how'd you like to be a preacher and you sitting there and all the people come in and want to hear something from the Lord and the Lord said, I ain't telling them nothing. Do you notice that he says, these men have set up idols where? And what did he say in Ezekiel 44? They were uncircumcised in flesh and in heart. Man looks on the outward appearance. The Lord looks on the heart. So he is, he is seeing that there is just not even a commonality anymore. They're not just doing it out of routine or just doing it out of habit or doing it because that's the way you're supposed to do it or that's the way we've always done it. They're not even doing it like that anymore. But nobody is doing it for the glory of God. So he says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you keepers of the charge of the house for the service thereof and for all that shall be done therein. Look at Numbers 3 and verse 26. Numbers 3, 26. They're going to get demoted. Here are some of the things that they had to do. Numbers 3.26. And the hangings of the court and the, and the curtain by, for the door of the court, which is by the tabernacle and by the altar round about and the cords of it for all the service thereof. I'm going to make you have to do the service of the house. You're going to be keepers of the charge of the house. Look at chapter 4 and verse 23 of Numbers. From 30 years old and upward unto 50 years old shalt thou number them, all that enter in to perform the service and to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. And on and on and it goes. Uh, verse 30 of chapter 4. From 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, shalt thou number them, every one that entereth into the service to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. And it repeats this same thing again in verse number 39. So I'm going to fix it so you don't come in among my holy things anymore. I'm not going to have you in anywhere near the holy place. You, you know, that's, that's what you say you're tired of. And you put other people in there and you're paying them to do things that God never intended for anybody else to do. So I'm going to make you in charge of the snuffers and the dishes and the curtain and folding up the badger skins and doing all this and transporting the ark and it reminds me of those people that uh, were captured by Joshua and they became hewers of wood and drawers of water the Lord loves a cheerful giver and that doesn't just mean giving of your money but giving of yourself the Lord knows our hearts. We should enter in his courts with thanksgiving and into his gates with praise. We should be thankful to God that we have any access at all into the presence of his glory. But these had to be demoted. There was not only a restoration, but there was a reformation of the priesthood because it had fallen short of the glory of God. In Ezekiel 20 and verse number 5 and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Ezekiel 20 and verse 5. In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up mine hand, here it is again. This is his lifting up his hand to swear that he would uh, be faithful to them, and he chose them. In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, 
Again, when I lifted up my hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God, as if God was testifying in court, raise your right hand and repeat after me. In the day that I lifted up my hand third time unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied, espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. I'm going to bring you into the glory of all lands. Listen, I don't need Google. I don't need Google Earth. I have created the heavens and the earth, and I know a place that I want you to be. I've got a land of Goshen for you in Egypt, and I've got you a place flowing with milk and honey. And I've raised my hand, he said, three times that I want you to be there. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abomination of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt again. I am the Lord your God. Same thing he said in verse 5. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abomination of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, Okay, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. He lift up his hands to bless them. They nail those hands to the cross. So we see, dear soul, that it wasn't just the jot and tittle. It wasn't just the law, but it was the love. It was that God had showed special concern for them and provision for them, and he was looking for that to be returned to him, and he did not find it. To the unworthy, in verses 6 through 9 of Ezekiel 44, God said, You've been bringing strangers that are uncircumcised in heart into my sanctuary, and I'm not going to have it anymore. Then to the unfaithful, in verses 10 through 14, we read how the Levite was not faithful in the account of the Good Samaritan. And they began to be demoted in verses 13 and 14. God said, okay, I'm not going to let you come near my holy things anymore. You know, to once have known how sweet and precious it was to be able to approach unto God, and to know how awesome it was that the high priest went into the holy place only once each year, but that not without blood, and to know that you had that privilege, it would be a terrible thing later in your life to know that you had violated that and God had divorced himself from you. And that's what Moses was talking about to them as we read you that passage in number 16. So they went astray. Verse 10, Ezekiel 44. And the Levites that are gone away far from me, when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. Now, Verses 15 and 16. We haven't read it yet. You're going to run into a name. And it's an ancient name. And in verse 15 it says, But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok. Why are you going back to that ancient name, Lord? Because... He is one, and his offspring and those who followed after him have kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me. Do you realize here tonight that you have an opportunity to ingratiate yourself to the Lord in future days to come? And your name can become an ancient name wherein God points back to us and says, you know, in those times that you lived in when 
America had turned its back on God and religion was rotten and you couldn't find, you know, go to the north, south, east, and west and, and there was a famine of hearing the word of God and you stayed faithful to me? Wouldn't that be good that God said, y'all remember Zadok? Who is he? Well, he was a Levite and his sons kept the charge of my sanctuary. Well, good. Yeah, but that ain't all. They kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me. When everybody else thought it was the easy way out, well, everybody else is doing it. But you said, no, God has never turned from me. I am not turning from him. I don't care if I get mocked. I don't care if I get laughed at. I don't care if I get ostracized. I don't care what they do to me. Jesus died all by himself on that cross for my wretched soul, and I am not turning back on him. That has to be the Holy Spirit. Because the spirit of the age is that all the Levites walked out on God, hired somebody else, then put them in their place. It had to be the Holy Spirit. Verse 15, they shall come near me to minister unto me. They're going to come in and take the place of those that I demoted. I told them you will not come to me, in verse 13, to do the office of the priest unto me, nor come near to any of my holy things in my holy place. Verse 13. And God said, well, I got a, I got a, a, vac a vacancy in there now. What am I going to do? I'm going to get the sons of Zadok. And I am going to let them come near to me to minister unto me. And they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord. So he's not going to allow them to offer the fat and the blood, but he will get the sons of Zadok, those Levites, to do it. Verse 16. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. They shall. Isn't that good? God is so good. Look at 4319. Ezekiel 4319. And thou shalt give to the priests, the Levites, that be of the seed of Zadok, which approach unto me to minister unto me, saith the Lord, a young bullock for a sin offering. Go back up to verse 18. And he said unto me, Son of man, thus saith the Lord God, these are the ordinances of the altar Remember in 44 and verse 5, Mark well and behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee according to all the ordinances of the house of the Lord. Here are the ordinances of the altar. Verse 18 of chapter 43. In the day when they shall make it to burn, to offer and burn offerings thereon and to sprinkle blood thereon and the only ones that I want to offer the burnt offerings and to sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice on the holy things in the temple are the seed of Zadok. Why? You should cross-reference 4319 with 4415. Because when everybody else had a convenient God and when everybody else was not wanting to hear the old, old story, I don't want to hear it anymore. It's the same old gospel. I'm tired of it. I don't want to go to hell. I do want to go to heaven. I was baptized. I made a confession of faith. God owes me. I will be all right. God said, I wouldn't count on it. I'm going back as far as I have to go and find where a good line of priests started, and it was with the sons of of Zadok. Hebrews chapter 7. Verse 
verse 11. Would you for your sake, and I'm trying to help you so that you can hear it with your own ears as your mouth says it, read me down to the first comma in Hebrews 7, 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood. Okay, what are we talking about? Priesthood. What kind of priesthood? Break down the word Levitical. What's the first part of the word Levitical? Levi. 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 Now, and if it is that which suggests to you and sets forth to you that there should be some sort of perfection that comes from the priesthood of God. If, therefore, perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should arise? Now, I ain't reading any farther because I just want you to get this. Don't want to bring in Melchizedek and muddy up the water right now. Just want you to think. Think about that. If the Levites had been able to bring in perfection, they would have never been a substituting of the sons of Zadok. That's what that says. I know it's not what it says, but that's what that says. If perfection had come by the Levites, there would never have been a need to substitute another priest. In this case, the sons of Zadok. I know the Apostle Paul is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's who I want to talk about. And he speaks of him concerning being after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. Listen, at you read the first phrase in verse 12 down to the first comma. For the priesthood being changed. Right? Why is the priesthood changed? Because perfection has an if associated with it. If perfection had come by Levi, Levi would still be in there doing the job. But he's not. I know this is talking about something entirely different. Well, it's not really, but I understand what the Apostle Paul is getting at. But I want to make that impression on you. God said he has made us a generation of kings and priests. You don't have to go through Mary. I don't have to go mumbo jumbo to Mary and get her to pray for me Mary need to pray for herself and I don't have to go to Peter I go directly to Christ Amen. glory to God isn't that some? you are a priest in your own right be sure that you offer your priesthood to God with a warm, thankful heart. That you're able to minister the sacrifices of praise unto the Lord. And understand that God has taken priests that started out good and cut them off. And put in a whole different priesthood more than once. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertain to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning what? Priesthood. That's the law that was changed. Moses said, Thou shalt be priest to God, Levi, Aaron. The law changed. Now it says, Christ. And it is yet far more evident 
for that after the similitude, the likeness of Mel- Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment. That's what happened to the Levites. That's how the sons of Zadok, as it were, got their shot at this thing. Because the people that were in there doing it said, we don't want to do this no more. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Verse 20. And inasmuch, Hebrews 7, 20. For inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. But this one with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Talking about Christ, thou art a priest forever. It's not going to end. You're not going to wind up like Levite. Like a Levite. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better contract, a better covenant, a better testimony. And truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. This account in Ezekiel 44 brings us to Christ. There's no way you can stay out of it. You can't have anything but a history lesson if you read Ezekiel 44, verses 15 and 16, and don't go to Hebrews chapter 7 and see that there was a change in the priesthood talking, uh, uh, spoken of there when the apostle was talking about Jesus Christ being the great high priest of our soul. And does not he say, I think I should have looked at it before I turned, in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 1, the sum of all things... Now, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. What does that mean? The total. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. And that is Jesus Christ. So we understand and see that we're not just studying Jewish history. We are studying Christ, the scriptures are they which testify of me, he said, John 5, 39. And in Luke 24, he tells him that all the things that were spoken by Moses and David in the Psalms and all the prophets were concerning him. So here is the faithful Zadok. He's remembered. As a lamb slain, From before the foundation of the world, he's remembered. He was there the same yesterday, before time, today in time, and forever when time shall be no more. Jesus Christ, the eternal priest of God Almighty, shall never change. He shall always be enthused about ministering and being a mediator between God and the people. These priests lost it because they got involved too much in what they were doing and not who they were doing it for. Second Samuel chapter 15. Let's spend the rest of our time looking at Mr. Zadok. Second Samuel chapter 15. The name Zadok comes from 
the Hebrew in Ezekiel 16, 51 and 52, it's in both verses, hath justified. The name Zadok comes from the phrase in Ezekiel 16, 52, more righteous. So Zadok was, he was justly. He was righteous. That's what his name means. Second Samuel 15 and verse 14. And David said unto all his servants that were with him in Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servant said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth and all his household after him. And the king left ten women which were concubines to keep the house. And the king went forth and all the people after him and tarried in a place that was far off. We drop down to verse 23. And all the country wept with a loud voice and all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the brook Kidron. It comes from a word in Job 5.11, those which mourn. It is a dusky, mournful place. Passed over the brook Kidron, and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. Hold your place. John 18 and verse 1. This is the transliteration of that word into uh, Greek. When Jesus has spoken these words, John 18, 1, he went forth, David went forth, with his disciples, David went forth with Israel. David was barefooted. Jesus had his feet to be made bare to nail them to the cross. David covered his head and walked out mournfully. Jesus Christ was made of no reputation and could not be seen for who he really was. And David took all the people with him and Christ took us to the cross. He went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron or Kidron where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And as David had Absalom, the next verse says Jesus had Judas. And Judas also, which betrayed him, listen, knew the place. For Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 23 and 24. And all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the brook Kidron, and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. And lo, two words. Zadok also. And all the Levites were with him, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down the ark of God. And Abathar went up until all the people had done passing out of the city. The priesthood is not going to fail till all the people are done, passed over into the place where Jesus Christ is sacrificed. 
God Almighty, in this ancient account, was yearning for his son to come and to finish the transgression. He was waiting for the time when the Lord Jesus Christ would say, it is finished. He bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Therefore, he had the man after his own heart, a man that he said would sit on his throne forever, the man David, to act out the part of his son. He gave his son Judas, he gave David Absalom. But this old while that was going on in the dusky dark place of Kidron, the priesthood did not fail. For the Bible said in Hebrews 2.14, through death he destroyed him that had power of the devil, that is, excuse me, had the power of death, that is the devil. Let me back up and say it right. Through death he destroyed him that had the power of death, that is the, the devil, and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Even in death there was that priesthood that was continuing and getting stronger, and whose name was associated with it? Zadok. First Kings chapter one. First Kings chapter one. And verse seven. Verse 5, actually. Adonijah, one of the sons of David, I think he's the sixth son of David, by the particular woman. You can find that in 2 Samuel 3, verse 4 and 5. Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. Here comes insurrection again. Verse 7. And he conferred Adonijah conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, with Abishar, Abathar, the priest, and they followed Adonijah, and they following Adonijah helped him. First word in verse number eight. But, but whose name is going to, pre, going to appear right after that? Zadok. Here's another insurrection. Here's another fellow saying he's going to be king. And it ain't going to be that way because it ain't God's will. And guess who was right there in the middle of it? But Zadok the priest and Benah the son of Jehoiada and Nathan the prophet and Shimei and Reli and the mighty men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. It was the popular thing to be with Adonijah. Oh, he's proclaimed himself the king. They're going to, you know, kill sheep and have a big feast and a party and a lot of, a lot of stuff to eat and drink and everybody's there going to have a party and then, and Zadok said I'm staying home reminds me of Daniel they had to send for him he wasn't at the king's feast they had to send for him to find out what the writing on the wall was all about Zadok said I ain't in all that the man had the spirit of God in him folks Listen, verse 25, 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 25. Adonijah, make it 24. And Nathan said, my Lord, talking to David, my Lord, O king, hast thou said, Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? Have you said that? Well, if you hadn't, he's gone down yonder to have, uh, have a feast He's gone down this day and has slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance and hath called all the king's son and the captains of the host and Abathar the priest. And behold, they eat and drink before him, saying, God save the king. 
God save King Ananias. But me, Nathan the prophet, even me, thy servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benai the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon, hath he not called. We ain't been invited. That's the best thing that ever happened to you, that you didn't get found on the list of those partying to put the wrong king on the throne. Ooh, ain't God good. Chapter 2. Verse 26. I always have to back up. First Kings 2. I don't know where to start. Let's just go ahead and start down there. This is uh, Bathsheba talking to Solomon, making requests, and also David involving himself with it. In uh, 1 Kings 2, 26, King Solomon sent by the hand of Benai, in verse 25, in verse 26, And unto Abathar the priest said the king, Get thee to Anathroth unto thine own fields. He throws out the priest. For thou art worthy of death. But I will not at this time put thee to death because thou bearest the ark of the Lord God before David my father. You used to carry the ark before David. That's what God said to these priests in Ezekiel 44. Y'all used to be in the holy place taking care of my holy things. You ain't doing it no more. I'm breaking my covenant with you. You, go, you boys are going to be in charge of the snuffers in the dishes. You're still going to have to do the service of the tabernacle, but not with my holy things. Because thou hast been afflicted in all wherein my father was afflicted. So Solomon thrust out Abathar from being priest unto the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord, listen, which he spake concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh, that nobody in Eli's house was going to approach unto God anymore. This thing was cleaning out ancient problems. And verse 35, And the king put Benai, the son of Jehoiada, in his room over the host, and Zadok the priest did the king put in the room or in the place of Abathar. Now let's go back and reread Ezekiel 44, 15, and 16. He has addressed the unworthy in verse 6 through 9. He has addressed the unfaithful in verses 10 through 14. But now he addresses the faithful in verses 15 and 16. But the priest of the Levites, the sons of Zadok, which kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord God. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. Ain't God good. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Not you guys, you Levites. 
You can't stand in the holy place. Why? Because you don't have clean hands and a pure heart. Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4. Who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn, sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. That's the one shall be able to ascend the hill of God. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Are you tired? Does it seem like that it's just the same old thing? We got to go over there on Wednesday night and everybody else is whatever they're doing. And the Lord, Malachi 3.16. I started to try to quote it, but I better read it to you. Malachi 3.16. You think John 3.16 is good, you ought to try this one. Malachi 3.16. Then they that feared the Lord and spake, next word. Ain't got nothing new to say. If it's new, it ain't true. So they're just still talking about the same old thing. How much the Lord's been good to them. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Listen. And the Lord hearkened. Go get me the sons of Zadok. But that's like the king reading the old dusty, you know, minutes of, of, the, uh, of the country and saying, has anything been done for this fella? You know, reading the old dusty books and come to find out that nobody had done anything for Esther's uncle. Mordecai, I knew it'd come to me. God's got some old musty books. And he remembers. Why was you doing it just for, you know, habit, routine? Attend the service, pay your dues, go to heaven. Or do you have love in your heart to God? Do you have a circumcised heart? You don't love the world, neither the things that are in the world, but you love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. He is your only everything. And the Bible said, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written, two words, before him. Before him. Your name is written there and what you did and how you did it. And he put the sheep on his right hand and the goats he put on his left. And to the sheep he said that they were blessed and they were to enter into the joys of the Lord. For they had been a blessing to him in that they clothed him when he was naked and they fed him. When he was hungry and they visited him in prison, they attended him when he was sick and they said, we didn't see you like that. And he said, you remember when David was crossing the book, Kidron? You remember when Absalom was driving him out in shame? That was the exact replica and type of me when I was driven out into the garden to have to meet Judas, I remember you being there with me. Ain't God good. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, I don't know how to be a super duper Christian. You ain't got to be a super duper Christian. What's the last phrase of this verse say? And that thought upon his name. Did you get in on that? One of these days, the first, going to be last. And those who have been despised by the world and are last, going to be first. Because God remembers and he says, 
get rid of all these Levites. They make me sick. Get them out of here. I don't want them having anything to do with my holy things anymore. They ain't going to do nothing but just take care of the heavy stuff. And, the, you know, the little incidental stuff. They sweep up and, you know, they can, they can do things that, that, uh, that everybody considers to be common. They're not going to approach my holy things anymore. Go get me the sons of Zadok. Thank God good. I know I've gone over 1 Kings 1, one verse and I'll hush. 1 Kings chapter 1. Why didn't you tell us when we were there? Because it didn't fit then. 1 Kings chapter 1. Verse number 32. And the king, and King David said, Call me Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benah the sons of Jehoiada. And they came before the king. And the king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and cause Solomon my son to ride upon mine own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. I'm going to let you read it. Verse 34 is like the heart of the watermelon. You know where you just dig it out and just get juice running down your elbow and then get all in your ears and it's so cool and good in the hot summertime. That's this kind of verse. Read 1 Kings 1, 34. Yippee-yi-yo-ki-yay. Zadok anointed Solomon.